Hey, AP kids, I'm going to um, do something I haven't done for you yet. All my other classes, I've made lecture videos. Last week, we really weren't doing anything that required that. So I'm going to start. That, let me move my camera a little bit. Uh, so you don't want to see my messy kitchen. Okay. Uh, we're going to um, go over the, some of the reading of the metamorphosis. I'm not going to read it in, to you because of copyright issues as well as uh, just because you don't need that. This is this book isn't that hard. The hard thing about this book is that the parallels to Kafka's life, which we talked about last week, we talked about his life. The parallels are so, uh, if you understand Kafka and his life, you can see why he wrote some of the stuff he did. Otherwise, this is almost uh, falls into, you know, we talked about his obsession with sort of the absurdities of life. Well, this definitely fits that, okay? But there is a lot going on in this. So I'm gonna do several videos for you guys for this week. Um, and I hope you all watch them. Um, they're there for you as a tool. You know, I kind of get bent out of shape when people don't watch the videos because I do put so much effort into them. But that being said, um, I also realize that some of you don't need that. If nothing else, I would love to have it just so that, you know, we, I, I get, it, even if it's not really, I get to see you a little bit, uh, you know, because it'll show up on my little analytics that someone watched the video, right? Um, so we're going to start out with the very beginning of this, which is such an awkward beginning. There's no lead in to this story. If you'll notice, it just bang. He's a bug. Very first sentence. <laughs> For a lot of people, that is so off putting. Um, you know, depending on the translation you've got of this, it says varying things. But the way he's described, there's no doubt it, this guy's almost looks like a cockroach. And um, that's on purpose. OK, we, we talked about this a little bit in the video that I gave you last week, if you watched that. But, um, you know. Kafka himself felt like that's what he was uh, because of mistreatment at the hands of his father um, and just society in general. And to be honest with you, a lot of people feel that way. And we are living in a time period right now where uh, probably over half of the country feels that way. All right. And it's really is kind of a scary thought. We are really working through his own brain as we go through this. Right. So he finds out he's been transformed. Oh, by the way, I'm looking down. I've got my book right here. So I apologize for not looking into the camera a lot. So uh, he lays on, lay on his back as hard as armor and saw, and he raised his head slightly, a jutting brown underbelly divided into arching segments. The bed covers could barely cover it. They threatened to slide off altogether. His many legs, pitifully thin in comparison with the rest of his bulk, fluttered helplessly before his eyes. So right away we can see just the disgust that this this brings up in most readers, and um, that's kind of what Kafka's going for because that's what he felt about himself. Uh, you know, he, he got a very brief window into that in that video, but he definitely was that way. Um, so he wakes up, he looks at the wall, and this is really an important detail. You're going to see this on the test, so just heads up. Uh, he has a, one picture hanging on the wall in his room, and it's of a magazine picture he cut out of a woman and put in a frame he built. So, uh, this guy's not got much of a life. And again, mirroring Kafka's. Kafka was not very successful in relationships. Um, a lot of that's because of his poor self-esteem, which I, if you cannot get that from this book, I, I don't know how we can convince you. Um... One of the things we notice right away is that we find out what his job is. He's a traveling salesman, and he talks about how stressful that job is. But one of the big things throughout this whole first section that we read this week is that he feels like he has to do this job and deal with all of the negativity that comes with it. We're going to read portions of that as we move through it. But he has to deal with all of this negativity and all of this like just – being made to feel like a bug metaphysically, metaphorically, metaphorically, um, and being made to feel like a bug because he has to, to help his family and just to live. Uh, it, it's a requirement. And, you know, we talked about in the video that one of the issues uh, Kafka had was with the absurd nature of bureaucracy and capitalism, which I know it's, it's dangerous to say that because I know a lot of you get really sensitive about it, but understand that it's not that, you know, you're anti these things. It's that in a lot of ways they work incorrectly. All right. Um, you know, I'm not against birthday cake, but if someone puts salt in it instead of sugar, it doesn't taste very good. So a lot of the elements of capitalism have issues. And one of them is it does make a lot of mid-level workers and low-level workers feel really bad about themselves. And it puts them in positions where, you know, they are forced to do things that just really they shouldn't have to do just to get by. Because if they don't, then they lose their way to make a living. So Kafka kind of feels this way here because you know, there's no safety net for him. Uh, I'm sorry, Sam, Gregor Samps is our, our character. Uh, Kafka is the alt writer. I'm going to interchange those frequently because really <clears throat> Samsa is Kafka in, in so many ways. 
All right. So this poor guy immediately, as he he wakes up and realizes he's become a cockroach, and immediately starts thinking about, oh no, what am I going to do about work? That's the kind of thing that Kafka's complaining about. That should not be the first thought. If you wake up in the morning and you realize you've all of a sudden been transformed into something else, your first th- thought should not be, oh no, what am I going to tell my boss? That really should not be what happened. It, that's all he thinks about for the most part uh, in this section we read. Um, let's see, what else have we got? Uh, he talks a lot about having to get up early and how you can't have a real life if you're going to go through this sort of, of lifestyle, which, again, this poor man's a bug. He's not going to have much of one anyway. Um, if we look down a little ways, he says he wouldn't avoid the director's wrath because the office porter had been waiting at the five o'clock train and would long since have reported his failure to appear. The porter was completely under the director's thumb. He had neither a backbone nor brains. What if Gregor were to report himself sick, but that would be highly awkward and suspicious because he had not been sick once in five years of service. I mean, that, that kind of sums up the point I was making. This poor guy is like, man, they've already been waiting for me. I'm not there. They're already going to have turned me in. There's already going to be a report about me not showing up. And I could call in and say I'm sick, but I've never been sick before, so they'll be suspicious. You should not have to live under that kind of fear of a job. You just should not. Um, it, it's it's repulsive that people would be that scared over one mistake and so that they would even go to work sick because, oh, no, I might lose my job. And uh, that's one of the real hallmarks of this of the first part of this book is really the focus on this guy's job and how unbelievably unfulfilling it is. And um, I know a lot of you might think, well, that's jobs aren't supposed to be. They're supposed to be there so that you can make money and live. But I disagree with that statement. And you don't have to agree with me. But God put uh, passions in us and our jobs should be ways to explore those passions. And yes, being able to pay the bills is part of life. And no, everything can't be free. But the fact is, is that jobs should also not make you feel like a lowly piece of trash. And, uh, you know, it shouldn't be I have to put up with this and be miserable 40 hours of a week just so I can go home and be so exhausted and tired and hate my life. But at least the lights are on. And if that's your idea of how life should be, well, I'm sorry. I feel like you don't understand what you've been put on this planet for. But poor Kafka and poor Gregor are having to deal with that. All right. So he's laying in there in bed, just trying to get used to this new body he's found himself in, which the descriptions that are are really powerful. Um, His mother knocks on the door. That's the first person he has contact with. And that's kind of key because Kafka actually had a really, uh, you know, a a better relationship with his mother. I wouldn't. Sorry about my cat. Uh, I wouldn't say it was a perfect relationship, but it was much better than his father's. Um, So that was kind of, uh, you know, at least something positive in his life. So his mother knocks on the door because he hasn't gotten up. And of course, that's what she's worried about, because we really see in this family, with the exception of his sister, you know, his mother and father, both, it kind of feels like they want him to get up because, well, they've become accustomed to him paying the bills. And if he doesn't, well, what are they going to do now? And you do get this feeling of selfishness. And again, this kind of reflects Kafka in his real life. All right. Um, The idea that I have to do this, even though these people don't really seem to care for me. But if I stop doing it, am I not doing my duty as a son to help them out? So now there's so much pressure put on him uh, to to get up. And, you know, and he, it's almost comical that he has all these images of getting up and going out and working and doing everything he can. Yet he looks like a cockroach and get this image of a cockroach, with one of those businessman hats and a briefcase going to work to try to sell a traveling salesman. What a, I mean, that's not going to work. But uh that's all he's thinking about is how do I do this and how do I pay the bills? And, um, you know, we live in a time period right now where you've got a lot of people in, you know, not a similar situation. No one's been turned into a bug. But the idea of how am I going to pay the bills and what do I have to do? And, you know, just that frustration that comes with that to the point where people are going and making them putting themselves in a position where they could catch a, a virus that could kill them or kill someone close to them just so they can go and open up a store. I mean, I've, I've read countless idiotic stories about places like GameStop uh, trying to stay open. Because people have to have the money. And I realize you have to pay the bills. But, I mean, it, it, the pressure on someone to get out and do this, even at the cost of their own health, is borderline ridiculous, guys. It, it, it truly is. Okay? Um I apologize for getting off on a rant. So, anyway, Gregor's mom comes, knocks on the door. Uh, he wants to get up and speak to her, but he, he just – we're going to find out in a few minutes, as you would expect – no one can understand him when he tries to talk. He just makes the noise that a bug would make, which makes this even more frightening. Okay, uh, Again, if you want to look at the parallels, it's the idea that uh, Gregor 
even when he tries, he can't communicate properly with his family. And again, you can see that parallel metaphorically with Kafka when, you know, he wanted to be a writer and he was actually good at it and just could not communicate that to his family and could not ever can really communicate with his father. And all of that type of stuff is heavy, heavy uh, in this. Now, of course, the bug metaphor is what this book is known for, but really it's uh, it's much bigger than that. Um so he keeps trying to get out of bed. We see a lot of confusion about that. Um, he says the biggest fear is that when he falls out of bed, finally makes a big crash, and people come rushing in. And, you know, without him there being able to explain it to them, how are they going to react? They're going to react in terror. They're going to run. How would you react if you opened a door and there's a huge bug there? Uh, it would be pretty scary, all right? So that gets us through the first little part here. And I realize this is a little disjointed. Um, it's kind of hard to do this book in small sections. There's three chapters. Um, it would be much better to break this up into three chapters, but I'm trying to stay in line with the uh, videos with the readings you did. So this was the first day. This was Monday. Kind of gets us started. We, the main points. He's a bug. He hates his job. He feels like it makes him you know, not uh, being able to live the way he should. He can't have relationships. His only relationship that he has is a cutout of a woman. And it's not like a, trust me it's nothing it's nothing frightening it's just a regular picture of a woman from a normal magazine but he can't have any relationships his relationship with his family is strained because he feels like he's just there to be the breadwinner and um you know he's trying to adjust to this this new body he's got you know his mother comes knocks on the door and asks what's going on and that's kind of where we left off so we're going to stop here we're going to pick up the next video afterwards where we're going to deal with and i believe it's the next section where the deputy manager shows up and we start to see how he's viewed as an employee okay all right thank you guys trying to keep these short and trying to keep them in line so if you want to do them day by day you can so uh it's great to be able to talk to you guys please you know i'm not trying to be one of those youtube guys but there is a spot at the bottom where you can do comments i'd love to hear what you thought about this section okay thank you guys